When it comes to insecure attachment, so if you're someone who relates to having quite avoidant and or anxious tendencies within your relationships, it's very possible that you're hard on yourself and that you criticize yourself a lot. People with insecure attachment tend to be really in touch with their inner critic, that inner bully that tells you that you're not good enough, that you need to be kinder, prettier, funnier if you're ever going to find, have or keep a relationship. It's very, very harsh. And like I say, people with insecure attachment tend to get quite stuck in that belief system more so perhaps than people who are secure. It's not 100% of the time, just generally speaking. And there are definitely certain patterns and areas of your life that you might be really, really hard on yourself. Now, I want to speak to you. I mean, I could really, really write a long list. I've written a partial list of how I see people that I work with being hard on themselves, where you're criticizing yourself. And the reason I want to talk to you about this is because usually it might be that you hold the belief or it might be that it feels like it's out of your control, but quite often people are, yeah, believing their inner critic, living their life, walking through the world based on these beliefs about themselves, even if they've been actively trying to change them, quite often they see themselves in certain situations, default back to criticizing themselves, being hard on themselves. These areas that I've chosen to share is because I really do see it that when you continue to criticize yourself, when you continue to have that internal dialogue telling you that you're not good enough, it can actually slow down your healing. So wherever it is that you are now and wherever it is that you want to be. So if you are someone who wants to be able to enjoy being single, if you're someone who actually wants to get into a relationship now or get more joy in your relationship, but you struggle because that internal dialogue is a constant, constantly worrying about what you should have done, could have done, what you haven't done and shaming yourself. And these are the areas where these areas I'm about to share are where I see it show up a lot. So if you do want to learn more about the inner critic, because I've touched on it just briefly there, I have a video that you can listen to. I'll share a link to that and that goes into a little bit more detail. So the first area that I really see people criticizing themselves and holding back their own healing is judging yourself about the process about the process of healing, judging yourself that you're not doing enough, that you can't change, that self-soothing is impossible for you. There it seems to be this rush, that it needs to be quicker, that you need to fix yourself if you're ever going to achieve X, Y, and Z. Healing is a process. You can still have the things that you want in your life whilst you are on your healing journey. It's not a case of, I have to have healed before I can be in a relationship. That's not how we tend to see things play out. There's a whole other idea I can sort of feel myself wanting to go into there. Um, I'm gonna pause. The next is about repeating patterns. So if you have defaulted back to an old pattern, you can be really, really hard on yourself. And it's not fair because of course you default to old patterns. Like I say, change is a process. When you're triggered, when you're activated or under stress, we tend to go back to those strategies that are automatic until we don't anymore. That's not like constant, but there are times where we're dipping in and out of old patterns. I work specifically with people who have that awareness now. However, actually, sustaining change is difficult because they do keep repeating patterns and it's a really really normal part of the process so beating yourself up and shaming yourself when you do go back to that person or you sulk um, when your partner goes out when you default to those old patterns the shaming yourself afterwards it's not helping you to heal 
Another area that you might be criticizing yourself is feeling like I'm not as secure as other people. Other people are going to make a much better partner than me. I'm not like other people. You are so much more than your insecure attachment. You're so much more than the anxiety or the avoidance strategies. They are strategies in place to support you that you can change. But you are so much more than your attachment style. I just really, really hope that you know that. It's not who you are. And not to mention that each attachment style actually comes with like pros, if you like. You know, someone who's anxious, they're very, very caring to be with. You know, they will remember things about you. They're going to remember your favorite biscuit or whatever it is. So you're so much more than your attachment style. So you don't need to compare yourself to secure people. And just a reminder as well, secure people aren't perfect either. Next is giving yourself a hard time that you're not kind enough. And remembering what I've just said, but giving yourself a hard time that you need to be kinder, nicer, better, more compassionate, when you're triggered, I do understand that you might see a side of yourself that isn't the nicest, the kindest, all of those things. But like I say, it's not who you are. Often when there's insecure attachment, there can be this underlying belief that you're not a good person, that I'm a bad person. It might not be those words specifically, but you'll know it's happening because of how guilty you always feel, how shamed you will always feel how much you come away from conversations reflecting on what you should have said, what could have made you a better person. If you go through a breakup or rejection and you're thinking about how you could have been better, how you could have made them feel better. If you had been kinder, maybe they would still be here. You are a kind person, I'm sure. I'm sure of it. See if you can find areas in your life where you do offer that kindness. If you really look and think, you know, I'm really not kind, Carly, actually, you're wrong, then yes, there is some shifts there to be made. No one is denying that. However, what I will tell you is that in my experience with the people that I work with, people are very, very hard on themselves with judging themselves about how, how good of a person they are. The fifth area I want to share is giving yourself a hard time and criticizing yourself that you're not being enough like a specific person. You're not enough like the ex. You're not enough like their colleague. You're not enough like their good friend. You're not enough like their celebrity crush, whatever it might be. And you're comparing yourself negatively to someone else. Quite often that someone else is linked to your person of interest and maybe your partner, maybe your ex, someone that you're into. And it's from there that you then find like, who are they close to? Who do they like? And I'm not enough of that. I'm not enough to like entertain someone, to keep someone, to be with someone, to support someone. And you really give yourself a hard time. And that is not feeling worthy. In those moments where you're comparing yourself to that, mo that other person, it doesn't actually have to be linked to someone that you like. It might, just, it might be the person that you like, that I'm not enough like them. I'm not confident enough. And you can look at it. You know, when we, when we have that comparison, when there's feelings of jealousy, for example, it can be really powerful to look at that in an inspired way and question what it is that's going on. Is there something in this person that I do desire to be more of? Or is this my self-worth simply telling me that I am not enough, that I'm not as good as this other person? Anytime I'm falling into that comparison trap, because it happens to me, I will really, I do a lot of somatic work. So I'll really feel into it. I'll really notice, wow, what it, what it feels like to not feel as good as someone else. And then I will be with that. I talk in the, the other inner critic video about how I support people when it comes to inner critic. It's specifically around really coming into relationship with your inner critic, the part that criticizes. 
So become, coming into relationship with that part of you that is judging the process, it's giving you a hard time about repeating past patterns, about not being secure like other people or not kind enough or not being enough like this person. And from there, we really begin to understand what it is that's going on. Because like I say, when your inner critic is in that driver's seat, you actually tend to be slowing down the process, if anything. It might not always feel like that because, and it, you might also not be aware because you're trying so hard and at the same time got this inner critic coming in and giving yourself a hard time about all of these areas. So here, I'm just starting a conversation with you. You know, if you do fall into these patterns, just to have that openness with yourself, to be like, yeah, I do really notice that in myself. I do notice that I fall into those familiar areas that Carly Ann was talking about. And I have been doing this work for over 10 years. I work with over 50 people in my membership. I always, always have a handful of one-to-one -one clients that I'm working with, you know, creating that space. And I can almost guarantee that the people that I'm working with are somewhere falling into these patterns. So if that's you as well, I invite you to do this work with yourself. I invite you to be non-judgmental with yourself. And if you want to go deeper, you can join my membership or work with me one-to-one. -one. All of the links for that are in the bio. You can get more details about how to apply to work with me one-to-one -one or how to come over and join the membership immediately. Do not forget you're enough, you're lovable, you're so, so worthy and you're irreplaceable.